reference to Justice Scalia and original because <laughs> we're still interpreting the Constitution. And what you outlined a lot of brilliantly was the fact that we now have 22 volumes of the ratification. Yes. And we're both. Two questions. One, have courts started using interpretation, started interpreting the court Constitution by reference either your work or particularly those 22 bodies? Two, as your understanding of any part of the Constitution change by virtue of your research in those 22 bodies? All right, the question has two parts. Has the courts, have the courts been using the documentary history of the ratification of the Constitution or my book uh, to look uh, in it, to, to find out what people in the 18th century s said in interpreting provisions of the Constitution? And second, has my work changed my understanding of the Constitution in any way? With regard to the first, you know, I think lawyers are, uh, don't pay a lot of attention to what historians do often. Uh, they're still, my God, the court is, not only are they failing to cite the documentary history of the ratification of the Constitution, they're still citing Jonathan Elliott's debates, and the, if they're gonna cite the, the ratification debates at all, they use an early 19th century edition, which is seriously out of date. Uh, I, I think probably somehow we have to cross the Rubicon here. I was thinking I should write an article in the Harvard Law Review and try to get that sort of message out somehow. I mean, we have to go onto the lawyer's territory to make our case because the lawyers aren't coming into ours. I, uh, I actually almost got into a fight uh, as a guest at a wedding. When you're a guest at a wedding, you're not supposed to get into fights with other guests, I think. I was, was I misbehaving or was he misbehaving? They sat me next to a, a, a con law professor at a leading university, which will be unnamed, who informed me that the, uh, I, I, I was just commenting that these were ratification debates were extremely important if you want to understand how the 18th century interpreted the Constitution. He's, I said, much more important the Federalist Papers. He said, well, there you're wrong. And I looked at him and he said, well, the Federalist Papers are the most important publication of the 18th century. They circulated through all the states and that, you know, they were read and cited and everywhere. And I took my breath away. I said, where did you get that piece of misinformation? It was, <laughs> it was disproven in, in a famous article in the historical journals decades away, ago, and that this is further substantiated by these, this documentary history. There are, I think, seven volumes on commentaries on the Constitution, which takes the various publications, even essays and newspapers, and tabulates where they were reprinted and how, how much. So that puts nails in the coffin of this guy's view. Uh, fortu fortunately, he had to leave early, so we didn't come to blows. <laughs> But I, th I think that actually it's, it's strange. The world, I mean, I think the belief in the Federalist Paper is an item of almost religious faith uh, in certain segments of the legal establishment. And uh, I, have, I am not optimistic about interfering or changing that, but I'm going to try. Second, has uh, my views of the Constitution changed in any way? This is, this is a little difficult for me to say. I'm sure my understanding of it has deepened. Uh, I, before, I wrote primarily on uh, the independence movement. And of course, my last book was on the Declaration of Independence. It, I noticed something very funny, though, after I published this book, American Scripture, Making the Declaration of Independence, people from the girls who were taking books from the study in Widener where I was working, through leading lawyers who would see me on the, on the subway, they would say, oh, how's your book on the Constitution doing? And I would say, well, you know, actually, it was on the Declaration of Independence. And they would go, uh, uh, you know, I like to, another tedious academic making distinctions. Where, you know, all of our founding documents are kind of one mush. Uh, I can't explain really how Bill Clinton got the Gettysburg Address confused with the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> But, but John Boner is not one of a kind. He's a, he's a sign of a larger, 
uh, tendency in, in this regard. So I hadn't really worked that much on that Constitution before this. Certainly my understanding of the document has deepened, but you know, it's complicated. It doesn't have rhythm. It's a legal document, and you have to go through it, you know, Every once in a while, I, I have to go through it again to say, well, what does it exactly say on that point? Or, or is that Article 6? I think it's Article 6. But what paragraph of Article 6 is? And I have to look at it myself. What I would say, I've, I've become much more familiar with it. My great epiphany, however, is that most Americans have not read the Constitution since high school, if then. Let me challenge you. Go home, read the Constitution, but do it in a different way. Pretend that you are an American in September 1787. The document has just been published. It's, it's a big surprise. This isn't what the Federal Convention was supposed to be doing. Let's have a look at it. Look at it with fresh eyes. Forget the past 200 and what, 30 years, something like that. Look at it with this question in mind. Is this all perfectly clear? Are there parts of it that seem dangerous or wrong or that could be abused? Are there things that are missing? I mean, read it critically. We read it too reverentially. We read things with, that are with reverence, they seem boring. Uh, read it critically, and I think you'll see more in it than you expected, and reading it will be. Uh, a, a task of interest. I can't think of anything I would feel happier about if I got you, this wonderful group of distinguished people, to go home and read the Constitution. And now I should be able to take out of my purse a pile of copies of the Constitution and give them out. But not having anticipated this, I can't this do it. This web page, you Google the Constitution. I go home and go, but print it out. <laughs> print it out. I've learned this as a teacher, that you don't learn things from reading online as you read it on paper. And I don't think it's just that we old fogies are happier reading things. I'm sorry, I don't mean to include you in my old fogies. <laughs> <laughs> However, I just don't think things go from the screen to the mind as easily as they go from paper to the mind. And it's even true for 18 to 22 year olds because I teach them in the classroom and they'll admit it if I ask them. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.